Well, hello there, my darlings, and welcome to a little episode of Why I Love Daisy. And you'll have to excuse my voice, I'm battling a virus at the moment, but I really wanted to do this video at the moment because, as you can see on the screen, the Frost Line DLC is on its way to Daisy and it's coming out, I believe, on the 15th of October. And I did a video about a year ago on this channel when I was a less experienced YouTuber and I wasn't very experienced in the other game that I compared Daisy to called Scum vs Daisy. And I realised very soon after I'd done that video that really I probably shouldn't have actually compared these two games because although they're survival games, there are so many differences. Now I'm not going to go over them again in this video. I want to talk about Daisy because there is something about this game that keeps bringing me back to it and I don't actually really know what it is so I'm hoping to discover the reason as I go through this video and I'm hoping that if you are a Daisy lover that you will understand and if you're not a Daisy lover that you'll just be interested anyway and as you can see on the screen I went to my Steam list of games and Daisy was I think 26th on the list of like top played games most played games there you go, there was like 42,000 people playing it at the time. Now, it does say that it's £40. Now, I did not pay 40 quid for Daisy. What I tend to do on my Steam account is put the games I want onto my wish list and then eventually they come up on offer and I get discounts and percentages off and then I'll buy them. Obviously, Warframe is free to play. That's one of my main games on this channel. If you like uh, being a space ninja, go and check out those videos. Anyway. Today we're going to be looking at Daisy and why I love it. And if you're not interested in Daisy at all, stick around because you might be after. A lot of the comments on that Scum vs Daisy video were kind of like a bit of a Marmite vibe, almost like you either love it or hate it. Now, with Scum, I neither loved it nor hated it. I was kind of neutral about it. And because I love the world of Daisy, I felt like I just want to go back to Daisy and I didn't feel drawn back to scum as much not to say i won't go back there is no hate here for scum at all and i think it is an amazing game i just don't feel like it's the same type of game as daisy even though they are similar <laughs> now that i've played them both i feel like hmm, maybe i shouldn't have compared them what do you think anyway one of the main reasons why i started my youtube channel back in 2023 was because i needed a focus i needed a hobby i needed to learn some new skills you know i'm in my 40s and i just felt like i'm over the hill and i need to learn some stuff that's why i started the channel and in that same vein what you're looking at right now is daisy code so i have my own server on daisy it's a pc server come and find me in my discord if you'd like to join it and I realised very quickly that I'm going to have to learn how to mod a server. Now, scum servers, especially when you rent your own, they give you god mode, like, all in. And it's so much, it's so easy to mod those servers. With Daisy, you have to learn a sort of new skill set. And there is a channel called Scale Speed Gaming, I believe. And he has done a whole series on how to mod a Natrado daisy server for console and pc and oh god it's invaluable and he's taught me so much about modding coding and given me the confidence so i feel like daisy has kind of forced me to learn some new skills but in a really good way so that's one of the i think one of the reasons i really am very drawn to daisy the other thing that i really love about daisy is there's no easily accessible in-game map and i know that sounds counterintuitive but it, it teaches you to learn really quickly how to orientate yourself on this map. And as you can see on the screen, there is an app or um, a website called I Survive. Now, it's not just Daisy maps on there. The scum map is on there as well. But the Daisy maps are in there. And the, the, this I Survive map app is so disgustingly detailed. Like, it even tells you where all the apple, pear and plum trees are on the Chinaros map. <laughs> That's the Livonia map we just looked at. There are, you can ping like your bases, your locations, you can set up filters, you can add people to this group so they can see this map, this version of your map but with all the notifications on there. You can filter things in and out, you can change the satellite view. I literally love this map alone. I can't help it, I just have to have a mooch and like the zoom in. Oh my goodness, like whoever created this, I, I need to embrace you in a warm hug. I love it. It's just such a beautiful thing to play around with and I love the filters as well so when you're teaching yourself to orientate yourself on the map when you're new to the game 
it helps you to visualize like where's the water pump oh i can see a church let's filter out those and it teaches you eventually to not even need the map to figure out where you are on the map and which way you should head and how you're going to survive and let's talk about that survival thing just for a moment about daisy so as you probably have figured and already know daisy is a survival game it is a post-apocalyptic zombie survival game to be precise and it is in my personal opinion a beautiful game i know it can be glitchy i know if you get a vehicle together you might go flying off into the sky i know on modded servers it can be tricky but honestly the ambience of this game i can't explain to you in your headset when you're in the rain, when you're in the bad weather, you can hear the cold wind blowing, you can hear the zombies in the distance, you can hear the wolves howling, you can hear the birds tweeting at night, you can hear the owls hooting. Oh, the rain on top of a tent. I cannot, even when you're in your car, it sounds like you're in an actual car with the rain beating down. The ambience is spot on. The rustling of the leaves on the tree. The, the water drops dropping on those leaves. I can't explain to you until you're in this world how pleasant it is. Now, I love, in real life now, I love bad weather. Now, I don't think it's bad weather. I just think it's beautiful. So the cold, the rain, the snow, <laughs> the everything... I freaking love that stuff so it's hard for me to say i don't like this when it rains obviously your character can get sick but i think we'll make them better and there is this whole thing about daisy when you first start playing oh, i can't survive i can't survive that's the whole point there's a saying in daisy it's not your loot it's just your turn with it and that is especially true on the pvp kind of the public servers where you're against other players this is why i rent my own server though because i don't really enjoy pvp generally in gaming I really enjoyed the PvE, the player versus environment. And man, there's a lot of it in Daisy. I mean, not only are you against the zombies, but you're against the weather, you're against viruses, you're against radiation clouds dropping on you, you're against starvation and oh, wounds, as you can see. I mean, I accidentally took my boots off once and kept getting cuts every time I ran. I couldn't figure it out couldn't understand why then i realized that instead of changing my boots i'd actually just remove them completely and put them in my inventory <laughs> so i was like what's happening to my player man and it took me a moment i'm a sort of vaguely experienced daisy player but oh my god it made me laugh so much i don't know if i recorded it i may have recorded it i don't know <laughs> don't make me laugh i'm gonna cough and what i really really love about this game is it just doesn't hold your hand there is a daisy wiki that will hold your hand and explain to you how you need to make things and what components you need to make those things everything needs a subcategory of something to make it and that might be irksome to new players but oh my God, i love i love having to figure it out and i also really love that feeling of competency when you finally do it so at this point in the game i've run across the map i'm absolutely drenched i think i accidentally fell into some water as well so i had to take my clothes off and wring them out whilst i was in the rain i didn't have any shelter and I soon realised, well, look, I have some tools on me now. I've rummaged, I've looted. I know that I need to make a fire right now. So that's what I decided to do at this point. And I can't tell you how long it took to make this fire. <laughs> but it didn't bother me. It was the whole process was like how it would be probably in real life. And oh man, it took me so long to get this stuff together to build this fireplace and then go and get the bark that I needed. <laughs> um the fuel that i needed the firewood the long sticks broken down into short sticks to make the fireplace in the first place and the whole time knowing that my player was sick so everything's just like harder work for them and the irony of me coming down with the same kind of cough as my player has right now <laughs> i'm having to edit a lot of coughing out so there you go you can see me adding my firewood that i've collected i think it was a bit damp but by the time i'd got everything together and i think i need to make a hand drill kit because if i had a lighter or matches they got damp so they wouldn't work um i can't see if i had them but i also knew that i had a potato or two so i wanted to like uh, cook my potatoes but to roast your potato you need to peel it first so you need something sharp you need a long stick but you need it to be sharpened so you can stick your vegetable on the end of it and roast it and let me tell you there are so many steps just to do this very simple task so it sounds irksome but by the time i got it all done and i'd sat down in front of the fire i cannot even begin to describe to you the feeling of accomplishment the sound of the crackling fire with potentially some rain in the background it genuinely feels like you're surviving <laughs> when you finally make that hand drill kit and then you finally ignite your fire and it all comes to fruition i you need to do it 
for me to be able to under, like get it through to you like that feeling of no one's holding my hand here i'm just doing this myself i'm surviving and imagine trying to do this on a player versus player environment as well where you're just constantly being hunted by other players <laughs> I, I, I mean i've tried it i just didn't enjoy it so you know with that in mind i always rent my own server and they are very cheap to rent a very small slotted server i would only expand it if there are a lot of you that wanted to join it but then i'll be honest that adds a, its own whole set of problems i have been on huge uh, private servers i know a lovely guy called forza who actually mod servers almost professionally now and it's almost like a full-time job guys And so I had to strip most of my resources and clothes off and lay them around by the fire to dry them out fully. And that's what happened. And I managed to put them back on and fix a few things up with the leather um, sewing kits and the sewing kits and the duct tape that I collected. And it's just a feeling of like, you have to take stock. You have to stop for a moment. It slows you down. And I know in this day and age, everybody's all about the speediness and getting things done and achieving things really quickly. And Daisy doesn't really allow you to do that. So on this little playthrough, I carried on wandering across the top of the map-ish and I come across this town and in the far distance there to the right, I can see a vehicle out the corner of my eye. So I make a beeline for it and uh, I have modded my server since this to make sure that all my vehicles spawn in intact. The only thing they don't have is fuel and water. So you're going to need water to fill the radiator and fuel obviously to get it going, but they should have everything else they need. This one had pretty much everything in it, um, apart from I think it was a battery. So I went and found, uh, luckily found a battery in the garages behind it. And it was that feeling of accomplishment again. Now, the only thing I realized I was going to need was water and there happened to be a water pump around here and I had a few plastic bottles in various states of decay. So I filled those up. <laughs> filled up my radiator so that you know it doesn't overheat and then managed to get the car closer to the water pump and just continue to use these little bottles to fill it up you know you have to be tactical usually you would use like a fuel canister if you have one and it fills up as much as you need with either gasoline from a petrol station or water from the water pumps if you can find them <laughs> And again, it can be irksome if you don't have everything in there. Like I said, I have now modded my server or tweaked it slightly so that everything, all the vehicles will eventually start spawning in more intact so I don't have to go looking for batteries. And I mean, there's an option to at some point put like some small amount of supplies in the boot, like fuel and water. You know, why not? And uh, I might, I might do that. I kind of like a little tiny bit of a challenge in a game. I don't like it to be too easy. If I was like a full on admin, I probably would want to make it super easy for myself. And I think a lot of people do when they are running like almost full time jobs on the Daisy uh, private server. So, yeah, I got this car running and that just made life so much easier. And because I know the Chinaros map quite well, I haven't explored the whole entire thing because I know it so well. I've got this route that I want to take. There are certain places where I want to build small bases. I might want to build a large base. It's going to take time. I need to find a truck. I need to load it up maybe with some crates and all sorts of things i want to get logs chopped <laughs> there's just so many things i want to do and it all takes time and it slows you down and it makes you sort of appreciate gaming again i'll be honest with you just have this little wander enjoy the ambience and yeah i love it so guys what i actually really want to do is post some daisy videos on my channel but i don't know how they're going to be received i don't know if i need to talk over them whether i could just do some daisy ambience videos for people to put on somebody put on my state of decay 2 video that they were trying to watch it but my voice was lulling them to sleep now i don't know if they're saying that i'm boring this is the home of meandering commentary and chilled gaming and i would love nothing more for this channel to be the place you come to relax and chill out have me on in the background you know just be happy get your favorite beverage do some studying do whatever you're doing with me on in the background either waffling away quietly 
in me accent or just i don't know would you like some just daisy asmr videos i don't know Oh, um, by the way, the one thing Daisy doesn't do on my Steam is support my controller. Now, I am a console player originally, so I find it difficult to orientate myself on keyboard and mouse, but I have done it. But I have to play Daisy exclusively on the keyboard and mouse. It doesn't support my controller. I can't change the inversion. It just doesn't seem to work properly. Even with the Steam overlay and trying to overrule it that way, it doesn't work. So let me tell you now, when you're used to driving a vehicle using a controller, which I feel is very intuitive, using the keyboard for the Daisy vehicle controls has been utterly terrifying for me because I just know how precious the vehicles are in Daisy. However, I am practicing and I'm getting better. I mean, I'm in first gear right now, but eventually we get up to the, like, the heady heights of third gear. I know. I do drive in real life, so I do know how to drive. <laughs> I just got not used to like... W sends you forward and backwards depending on which gear you're in. I was just expecting that S would take me backwards, but it didn't. It was just entirely the brakes the whole time. Do not mock me, sirs and madames, and everything in between, because you know I'm an old bird, but I am more than willing to learn new skills. As I have aforementioned, I'm always happy to try something new, especially in the gaming world, because there's so much being offered now in the gaming world that you just be foolish. There's a dead body there. Did somebody come through this way? There's only one other person on my server at the moment. Wow, how come they're dead already? Anyway, yeah, I'm always happy to learn new things and have a, a go at new games as well, if you want to suggest any. If they're cheap enough for me to have a go. But I've got quite a few games going on my channel at the moment. And just for reference, if you don't know what that noise was, yeah, that was a missile delivering a gas cloud for us. Now, we're going to get injured, but we won't get poisoned because we're in a vehicle. The longer we stay here, though, obviously, the more injured we'll get. But I had literally been camped out waiting for this gas cloud to go. When I got back, it had gone, drove into it, and the chances kicked off, obviously, on my server chances, that it was going to deliver another missile. So actually, some of the coding that you saw me doing previously earlier on in this video was me figuring out how to work out the coordinates of this gas cloud location and to omit it from the server so it would just take it off the server and not um, deliver a gas cloud to this specific area. I didn't want to turn them off all completely at all. No, I like the challenge. I like the thought we're going to have to get some hazmat suits and gas masks. And yes, you could call this cheating, but you know, I've got the power to do it, so why not? And I'm not coming back here. I just wanted something better than I had. And it's like a little military area and there's usually some good stuff in those, maybe. I haven't tweaked any of the drop rates for stuff like this, but I might. We'll see. Anyway, so yeah, I raided this place, <laughs> looted it, and then I carried on across the map and there was a specific place I wanted to hold up for a bit. And yeah, then I will start thinking about going off, looking for a truck, like I mentioned, and then working my way back across the map, building small little bases. And I want to go down south, down to the coast and build a tiny little mini base there. There's usually a lot of tents, big tents down there as well. I want those. And I want military. To, I just, I want the whole, I know what's out there and it's my server so I can get hold of it, but I don't want to make it too easy for myself. So that being said, if I ever get a teensy bit bored of just wandering around my own server and it not being PVP and not having that threat, I just go and log into a public server somewhere and give myself that adrenaline rush of can I survive against the environment plus other players? Can I start afresh? And depending on your settings or how it works, sometimes your player that you're playing on your private server will not cross over into public servers, but your public server character will cross um, go across the public servers that you choose. There's a lot to choose from. Those are 60 slots. There can be up to 60 people on those servers at any given time. And I find it terrifying. Like I get proper like anxiety when I can hear people and I'm you know, you're in the woods and you can hear rustling, you can hear footsteps, but it's like, is that an animal? Is that me? Is, am I being stalked right now? Am I going to get headshot? I've been headshot so many times on public servers. I'm not mad about it, but it's like, oh my god. So there you go, there's my why I love DayZ. It's the ambience, it's the challenge. It's a beautiful game, especially on PC. 
it's endlessly challenging and endlessly kind of rewarding. I will go for great swathes of time and not play this game and then all of a sudden I have to play it for like a week straight and I'm just wandering around and enjoying the views, the sounds, the challenge, the survival, the looting. I am a self-professed loot goblin which is why I'm getting back into State of Decay 2 at the moment. Go and check that little playthrough out if you like a zombie survival game with a different kind of vibe. There are some nods to Daisy in that game actually. I just noticed when I was editing. Anyway, my darlings, if you'd enjoyed this video at all, please consider dropping me a like, sub and or comment. Please feel free to come and join the Discord and join in the gaming discussions that we've got going on over there. There's a lot of Warframers over there, but we are building like a community of just gamers. So there's obviously going to be various different games talked about here and there and being able to help each other out within certain games. In the meantime, let me know what you think about Daisy in the comments. Be kind, even if you don't like it. We're open to, you know, views here. And I'm really glad that you joined me and I really do hope to see you again in the next one. Thank you for joining my Daisy TED Talk today. <laughs> And I really hope you stick around and that I see you again. In the meantime, you take care now and goodbye.